Donor reporting is the last but not the least step in the awards management end-to-end -end process. Accurate and timely reporting on the utilisation of voluntary contributions is vital for the accountability of the organisation. It is also essential for maintaining the confidence, the commitment and the involvement of donors. In this module, we will be exploring the various concepts and procedures associated with reporting to donors. By the end, you should be familiar with the overview of key concepts in Wipro's donor reporting, able to discern the different types of reports, both financial and technical, understand related procedures, including updating the GSM to reflect when a report has been submitted, and know where to find additional help and resources, including templates. But before we get started, I have a very quick question. Do you know how many reports on average per biennium are due for the Western Pacific region alone? Is it 100 reports? Is it 200? Or is it 350? The answer is approximately 350 reports. Now that you know how many reports are due, you will appreciate just how important the process of accurate reporting is. So, let us get started with an overview of key concepts. Here is the workflow from negotiation to donor reporting and award closure. During the first stage, it is important to establish good communication, clear expectations, and to ensure that the External Relations and Partnerships Unit, or ERP, is informed. Whilst there are different agreements that can be used, we encourage the use of WHO's standard donor agreement, as deviations require legal clearance. Following this, timeliness and accuracy in the submission of AARs and ADRs are crucial in the recording and distribution stage. After fund distribution, the activities must be implemented in line with the original proposal and donor agreement, with overall monitoring by the award manager and the program management officer, or the PMO. Remember, should an amendment to the agreement be required, such as a no-cost extension, ERP is to be informed as early as possible. And finally comes the donor reporting stage, where the organization's good work should be highlighted. Our focus in this module is donor reporting. Further details of the other stages can be found in the awards management modules. Before delving any deeper, may we remind that ERP should be informed as early as possible about a prospective engagement with a donor primarily so that due diligence can be carried out, particularly if the agreement involves a new donor. Also, so that a unique proposal reference number, or PRN, could be issued. This is used to help track the progress at each of the stages. The first thing to know about donor reporting is that it varies in frequency, format and content according to the requirements of the donor and the nature of the contribution or activity. In other words, reporting requirements are specific to each contribution. These are often spelled out in the corresponding pledge letter, the letter of agreement, or the general umbrella arrangement. WHO's standard donor agreement deals with donor reporting. For example, it may include one interim financial statement and one final technical report upon project completion. Reporting against an award and the underlying contribution is the responsibility of the award manager and the concerned budget centre. This is often done with the help of their respective PMO that will monitor and comply with the report due dates and types. Reporting requirements 
including the due dates, are entered into the GSM at the time of award creation as per the details in the award activation request, or AAR. Hence, it is important that the information detailed in the AAR is correct. The information in GSM is also used to generate weekly automated reminders notifying the award manager and the PMO of any overdue reports, as well as the upcoming reports. In Wipro, to ensure accountability and compliance, the status of overdue reports is reviewed by management at the program committee and PMO network meetings. So, you don't want to be late in submitting. We will explore relevant procedures, including updating GSM when a report has been submitted. But first, let's take a look at the different types of reports. All donor agreements for specified voluntary contributions require regular reporting on both financial implementation and technical activities. We also have a number of awards that do not require regular reporting, such as those flexible awards centrally managed by HQ, like assessed contributions. Generally, there are two main types of donor reports, financial and technical. Both differ substantially in content and process. Certified financial reports are very brief, showing income and expenditure. These reports are certified because they've been signed off by WHO's comptroller in headquarters. These may be interim certified financial statements, which are submitted when the award is ongoing, or final certified financial reports. Remember, all encumbrances must be cleared before the requesting of the FCFS. This should be provided by WHO before the close date of the agreement. Whereas, the management financial report is issued by the award manager and may include financial information. However, it is not reviewed or certified by headquarters and could include encumbrances. A technical report is the narrative of the project activities. The format and frequency of technical reports should be consistent with the terms in the corresponding agreement, whereby donors impose the use of their own templates for reporting, these should be followed. However, there are a significant number that do not have their own templates. Therefore, in an effort to enhance donor reporting in the region, Wipro has recently introduced new standardized corporate templates, which are intended to provide staff with a clear and consistent structure in line with the program budget and the 12th general program of work, to enhance the quality of reports through a distinct corporate identity and improve the way we communicate results. For example, the final technical report template includes the following components. An overview of essential information, background of the subject area, context, issues and actions, the outcomes of the project as related to the program budget, the activities carried out including any changes or challenges, financial information or implementation of the funds, communications and visibility such as communication materials relating to the project like photos, videos, news articles and brochures, and conclusions. This part describes the key achievements, the lessons learnt and where relevant the future steps. This may be new to you but do not worry, ERP is always ready to help by providing support, guidance and examples to help you every step of the way. Now, 
let's talk about the relevant procedures including how to update GSM to reflect that a report has been submitted to a donor. This is crucial information, so get ready! Three important procedures will be covered in this section. Submission of financial reports. Submission of technical reports. And updating GSM. First, the award manager makes a request for a certified financial report by completing the FCFS request form and sending to BUD. This is then reviewed by BUD, endorsed by BFO and forwarded by the award manager to the awards team in HQ. Upon receipt from HQ, the awards manager submits the FCFS with a copy to ERP for uploading into the Enterprise Content Management System, or ECM. The donor reporting process for submitting technical reports begins with the technical unit or country office drafting the report. Then, the award manager shall transmit the technical report to the donor in accordance with the terms of the agreement. A copy of the report and the transmittal letter or email should then be sent to ERP for uploading into the ECM. Lastly, GSM is updated to reflect that the report has been submitted. Now we're ready to learn the procedures for your final step, updating GSM. Upon signing into GSM, click on Awards, Read Only and then click Run. Then type in the award number and click Find. Click Open and then select Line 1 General under the Installments. Take note, this is not the PSC line. Click Reports. Update the report being submitted, whether financial or technical. Complete the date filed and who filed it. Click X in the upper right corner, followed by Yes to save any changes made. Then, click OK on the box. Finally, click X at the upper right corner to close all the boxes. Updating GSM to reflect when reports have been submitted will ensure that you're exempted from the weekly reminders and not included in the monthly monitoring at the PC and PMO network meetings. In addition, non-submission of reports can actually delay installment payments from a donor. This is why timeliness is so important. For more information related to this module and to obtain all relevant templates, forms and guidelines, please visit the ERP intranet site or contact your friendly ERP team via email or GPN. In summary, good communication is key good communication amongst your team, with ERP, and most importantly, with the donor. Together, we can create a culture of engagement and enhance our relations with donors by improving the way we communicate WHO's achievements. Until next time, happy reporting.